We're going to show you the installation of a heat shrink transition trifurcating 11 kV joint. This is for three core paper belted cable to three single core non armoured XRP cables or triplex cables. Using table one and figure one from the instruction sheet, mark out the cable jacket and use a suitable tool to remove. Mark the armor wires. Score with the hacksaw. Bend back the armor wires and remove. We now need to remove the Hessian tape layer, so we'll bend back the armor wires so that we can remove the tape to reveal the lead sheath beneath. Applying some heat may assist in this process. Now using some rags, remove the grease from the lead sheath. Mark out the lead sheath and using the tool cut through being careful not to damage the cores beneath. Score along its length. And peel back a strip. And then carefully prise off the rest of the lead cover. Mark out the carbon paper, apply a binder to the dimension shown, and tear back the carbon paper to the binder. Now make a mark on the belt papers and apply a further binder. And remove the belt papers to this point.
remove the fillers. We'll now apply PVC tape to the end of the cores to stop the papers unraveling. Now we're going to fit the lead earth bond. So make a mark on the lead sheet, tightly apply a piece of copper mesh, and secure the two copper earth straps with the stainless steel roll spring supplied. Twisting the roll spring like this will give a more secure bond. Now after removing the backing papers, apply some black mastic tape behind the roll spring up to the armour wires. Press the earth straps back onto the tape so that the solder blocks sit on top. Now apply more black tape over the solder block area and when the breakout boot is fitted this will help prevent water travelling down the braids into the cable crutch. Now clean excess grease off the cores and carefully position the clear oil barrier tubes. Position them about 50mm back from the cable crutch. And with a suitable heat source, shrink the bottom end of the clear barrier sleeves. and then carefully slide them down right to the bottom of the cable crutch. And then continue up the cores as shown. Keep the flame on the move to ensure the clear sleeves are fully shrunk and wrinkle free. Now we'll mark out the cores according to the table so that we can fit the semiconductive sleeves. This will turn a belted cable into a screened cable effectively. Line up with the mark and again with the heat source fully recover these tubes. The conductive tube should end up a little bit back from the clear sleeves previously fitted. Now with the aid of a little cable grease, insert the grey mastic crutch wedge pushing as far down as it will go. This will eliminate any air gaps. Make a 
small mark on the conductive sleeves. Remember to remove the previously applied binders. Stretch and apply the HV grey mastic tape. Apply the tape all around the crutch, up to the roll spring but not over it, and up to the mark on the tubes. We'll now fit the three core semi-conductive breakout boot. Position this over the cores, pushing as far down as it will go. Start shrinking from the centre of the boot shrinking the skirt down and then the fingers to the cores. Now apply some more black plastic tape at the bottom of the breakout and then position the under armour support ring and bend back the armour wires. Of course if double steel tape armour there's no need to fit an under armour support ring. Temporarily secure the armour wires with binding wires. Now before we proceed, we're going to fit the breakout shrink sealing sleeves over the fingers of the breakout. These are sealant lined and will fully seal this area. Now we're going to move on to the single core cables. So we're just making a mark on the outer jacket. And once that's removed, We'll remove any fillers and the copper equalising tape that's not required. And in order that we can work on the cable, we'll bend back the copper screen wires out of the way. Make a mark on the core to remove any excess cable. And because this is bonded semiconductive type cable rather than easy strip, we're not going to use glass to remove it. We're going to use a semiconductive shaving tool which is readily available on the market. This is a safe, effective way of removing the screen. And produces a really nice tapered end to the semiconductive screen. Now it's good practice, particularly at the higher voltages, to polish the core, so we're going to use aluminium oxide 240 grade paper to do this. 150 grade, if you can't obtain 240, will suffice. Remove any excess from the cores on the paper side, 
now we're going to remove the insulation from the XRP cores utilizing a tool. You can set this to the correct depth and it's very quick and easy. Now score the semiconductive inner layer on the XRP cable and remove. Make a mark on the paper core, cut around the core and peel pack the paper layer revealing the conductor beneath. We're now going to apply the stress relief tape to the screen ends, so mark the position of the tape on the core. On the paper side, as well as the XRP side. Then remove the backing paper from the stress relief tape, stretch and apply starting with the thin edge and fit the tape as shown. It may not be necessary to use all the tape supplied in certain circumstances. Do this for all cores. Next, we're going to fit the stress control tubes. Position these so that they overlap the screen ends and are about 5 millimeters back from the primary insulation. Heat from the center of the tube to one end at a time. Now we'll do the same on the paper end. Now remember at this stage to slide down the outer shrink sleeve and the large three core breakout boot in reverse position so that we can seal the single core cables. Now before connecting the cores remember to position the connector insulation tubes over the single core cables. Now we're going to use mechanical shear bolt connectors here which are range finding and will also suit copper to aluminium conductors as we have here. Follow the instructions supplied by the connector manufacturer. Use the grey HV mastic tape supplied to fill any gaps where the bolts have sheared. Next we're going to apply stress relief tape and a 
again starting with a thin edge, tape around the core, overlapping onto each side by 10 millimeters, and then across the connector. Stretch to about half its length and half width overlap. It's important to get a smooth taper here so that when the connector insulation tube is fitted there are no air voids. Now centrally position the connector insulation tube and you'll see that it covers the screen points shown below. Before fitting, in order to improve the moisture sealing, we're applying red mastic tape just in from the end of the stress control tubes so that the connector tube will sit on top. Reposition. And with your heat source, start from the center of the tube, keeping the flame moving all around to one end at a time. Keep the flame on the move to avoid scorching if possible. And then once fully recovered, apply the tin copper screening mesh around each core with stretch and 50% overlap. then leave it over the armors to bond at a later stage. We now take the main copper earth straps and temporarily position to the armor support ring on the three core cable side. and then secure with the armour clamps provided along with the copper mesh. Tape around any sharp points. Now bend back the copper screen wires on the single core side. and we're going to bond these to the two main copper earth straps with the use of a low voltage mechanical connector. Once that's fitted, apply some grey mastic tape to remove any sharp edges on the connector. And now we're going to use emery paper to roughen up the outer cable jackets on the single core cables. Apply black mastic tape around and in between the cores so that once the three core breakouts fitted, the tape will melt, flow and create a good moisture block. Remember to roughen the outer cable jacket on the three core side. Now shrink the main body of the boot and then the fingers to the cores. 
Now in order to get a good seal onto the breakout body when the outer tube's fitted, we apply a grey mastic tape piece. Try to keep the cores together in order to keep down the joint profile. You can use a spare piece of mesh to do this. Now this joint we're showing with an outer shrink tube which we centrally position so that it covers the breakout and the three core outer cable jacket. We're starting to shrink it from the centre to one end at a time. This joint could be supplied with a shell and resin as an alternative. But a fully heat shrink version meets all the international standards for impact test and can be done in a vertical position as well as horizontal and can be energised and backfilled quite quickly. The joint is now complete.